lighting controls on the steering wheel stalk. The XKR's lighting controls can be overwhelming with all the different options provided on that left hand stalk. Never mind the settings for auto lamps with exit delays, auto high beam, auto lights with wipers, daylight running lights, fog lights, a dimmer control, vanity mirror lights, interior lights, puddle lights, centre console light and the convenience lighting turned on by the smart key. There's a lot to cover and I'll show you the easy way to understand all the lighting options. My name's Bruce and I'm the proud owner of a black 2013 XKR. This channel is designed to share the knowledge that I've gained while owning Sylvester James. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell to be notified about more videos that I make about the XKR. The left hand column stalk is where most of the controls are located. And here's the easy ones first. There are three main selections and if you do nothing else you need to know these three positions, plus the high beam and the headlight flash selections. You'd think the off position would be self-explanatory. Well, not quite. Even in the off position, the daylight running lights are active when the ignition's turned on. The next two positions on the rotary collar turn lights on. A green warning light will illuminate in the instrument panel. The side light switch is the second position on the rotary collar. It turns on the side, rear and number plate lights as well as the instrument panel illumination. The third position turns on the headlights as well as all the lights activated by the side lamp switch. That's easy peasy so far, but there's two other switches that you'll need to know about for normal operation. The high beam is selected by pushing the stalk away from you. It'll stay in place until you pull the stalk back to turn off the high beam. There's a blue warning light in the instrument panel. Pull the stalk towards you to flash the high beam and it'll remain on for as long as you hold the stalk towards you. And in case you're wondering, if the rotary switch is moved to the off position while the high beam is selected, the headlights will return to high beam when the headlight position is selected again. That's unless the ignition's been turned off in the meantime. Next, let's look at the operation of auto. It's the position that you'll get the most benefit from, but you need to be aware of the applications. Using a light sensor, the auto setting automatically turns on or off the low beam, side lights, rear lights and number plate lights when the light fades or increases but it does more than just turn the lights on and off. Also part of the auto setting is auto high beam which requires the car to be traveling over 40 kilometers an hour that's 25 miles per hour and it will automatically switch to high beam when the appropriate external lighting conditions are prevail. A green indicator light will show in the instrument panel and it's got a headlight icon above the word auto. To manually override and return to low beam from auto high beam, pull the stalk to the flash position and auto high beam will be cancelled. Also part of the auto feature setting is windscreen wiper detection which automatically turns on the headlights in a heavy downpour of rain. The side lights and the headlights automatically turn on if the windscreen wipers are switched on for more than 20 seconds. And once the windscreen wipers are switched off, the side lights and headlights will automatically switch off after two minutes. You should also note that when auto is selected, the lights turn off when the ignition is turned off. The instrument panel will show auto lamp delay off. Think of the auto setting as auto everything. So let's review what happens when you select the auto setting. The headlights turn on when it's dark and then turn off when the ambient light brightens. 
Some of the occasions when the lights will turn on are entering an underground parking station, entering a tunnel, while driving in the evening, and the light dims. The auto setting also activates auto high beam when driving at night above 40 kilometers per hour without road lighting and in the absence of other vehicles lights. The system's only active when the ambient light is low. Auto also activates the windscreen wiper detection when the wipers have been active for more than 20 seconds. And this means that in the heavy rain, the lights will automatically turn on as a safety measure. Auto turns off the headlights immediately after the ignition is turned off. The next three positions on the rotary collar provide an exit delay when the ignition is turned off and after the driver's door is closed. And the positions selectively provide 30 seconds delay with the auto lap delay 30 in the instrument panel, one minute delay with the auto lap delay 1 in the instrument panel, and two minutes delay with the auto lamp delay 2 is in the instrument panel. So that's all the lighting controls associated with the stalk, but it's also used to activate the left and right indicator lights. The indicator lights operate when the left hand stalk is used as a direction indicator. Move the stalk down to indicate a left turn or push up to indicate a right hand turn. And if you just want to indicate you're changing lanes, briefly and lightly hold the stalk up or down and the indicators will flash three times. The hazard warning lights use those turning indicator lights in tandem. So the hazard warning lights are turned on with the switch on the centre console. And they operate whether the ignition's on or off. Now that covers all the controls on the left hand stalk. The rear fog light switches are in a panel to the right of the steering wheel on a right hand drive vehicle and to the left of the steering wheel on a left hand drive vehicle. Push the switch to turn them on. They'll only activate when low beam is selected. If the ignition is switched off, the fog lights return to the off position. In the same panel is the dimmer control that brightens and darkens the instrument lights as well as the touch screen and a light that illuminates the centre console. Push and release the knob to extend it. Rotate to lighten or darken or push the knob to return to its home position. The interior lights are controlled from the courtesy lamp at the top of the windscreen position and that's in the overhead console. The two outer buttons operate the appropriate reading lights. The centre button switches on and off the courtesy lamp, including the footwell lights, and they both operate when a door is open. The courtesy and footwell lights can be deactivated by pressing the centre switch for two seconds. In the overhead console, there's a light that illuminates the centre console inside the car when the side lights are on and it's controlled, as mentioned earlier, by the dimmer switch. Other lights are in the sun visor. The lights are illuminated when the vanity mirror flap is opened. Door guard and puddle lights automatically illuminate when a door is opened. The lights turn off after 15 minutes if the door's left open. And finally, the headlights can be turned on from outside the XKR with the Smart Key Remote. And if you want to illuminate your way as you approach the car at night, press the headlight button on the Smart Key. The headlights turn on for up to 25 seconds. Press again to turn them off. In an emergency, you may need to set the alarm. And to do so, press the hazard button for three seconds or press it quickly three times and the horn siren and the hazard warning lights will be activated. The emergency alarm will continue for five seconds before you're able to cancel the alarm by pressing the button for three seconds again. It can also be cancelled when the car's starter button is pressed. Phew, I hope you got all that. I told you at the beginning of the video, there's a lot to cover. 
I hope it's opened your eyes to features you didn't know about the XKR. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell to be notified when I publish more videos.